Hello mind mappers and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be going over Focal Point by Brian Tracy, a proven system to simplify your life, double your productivity, and achieve all of your goals. Brian Tracy, of course, is a favorite of mine and a favorite of this YouTube channel. His books have been viewed almost more than any of the other books on the channel. So far, I've done Goals, and I've also done Eat That Frog. Focal Point is kind of the third installment here, and then we're moving on to Maximum Achievement, which I think is probably a culmination of all those books put together. Focal Point. Let's go over the quote that I pulled out that I believe gives us a good overview of what we can expect to learn today. You can dramatically improve the overall quality of your life far faster than you might think possible. All you need is the desire to change, the decision to take action, the discipline to practice the new behaviors that you've chosen, and the determination to persist until you get the results that you want. So we're starting off with a really motivational message here. It's so hopeful, practical, and uplifting. I love it. There's no speed limit to change. There's nothing holding you back right now. There's nothing keeping you where you are. Nothing stopping you from making a massive change in your life in just a short period of time. And this really should serve as a reminder to us all before we get deeper into some of the more practical parts of the book that the potential that we hold is unlimited. The potential power, uh, the potential is a power that you wield. So the potential that you have is something that you have the ability to to either use or to not use. You have the ability to live up to your potential or you have the ability to let the potential waste away. Everything you want is within your control. And of course, what this book is all about is how you wield that power, how you use that control. Having and knowing your desire to change, having and developing the discipline to change and the commitment and determination to persist until your desire is a reality. That's what we're going to be talking about here today. Of course, there's the typical Brian Tracy, really practical exercises that we're going to go through. But before we get into those, let's talk a little bit about mind mapping. You can get the most out of these mind maps by following along. You can find the process of how I mind map plus all 50 plus mind map templates available at the link down below. Following along will help you learn more, remember better and apply these books to your life. And if you're interested in a shortcut to some of the principles that we've learned on this channel so far around mind mapping, around learning, around habits, around goal setting, I've created masterclasses on each of those topics. You can find them at themindmapguy.com. Our first big idea here is responsible. Among the most important personal choices you can make is to accept complete responsibility for everything you are and everything that you ever will be. This is the great turning point in life. The acceptance of personal responsibility is what separates the superior person from the average person. Personal responsibility is the preeminent trait of leadership and the wellspring of high performance in every situation. Accepting complete responsibility for your life means that you refuse to make excuses or to blame others for anything in your life that you are not happy about. You refuse from this moment forward to criticize others for any reason. You refuse to complain about your situation or about what has happened in the past. You eliminate all your if onlys and what ifs and focus instead on what you really want and where you are going. So this is a shift in focus towards I'm responsible for everything in my life. And I believe that this is the core building block for the growth mindset. This decision to accept complete responsibility for yourself, your life and your results with no excuses, is absolutely essential if you want to double your income and double your time off. From now on, no matter what happens, say to yourself that I am responsible. And to me, this is the most important choice that we'll ever make. Taking responsibility for everything that has, is, and will happen to and for us. This is definitely a hard pill to swallow for some. From a young age, we're told that things in our lives are the fault of others or outside of our control. We're told that politicians, billionaires, teachers, or bosses have control over us, so therefore it's their fault when things go wrong, and we don't really get to celebrate for ourselves when things go right. While these people might actually be actively harming us, people like politicians and bosses and stuff like that, they certainly have a good degree of autonomy over us. 
how we respond to that is our responsibility. How we respond to people feel, feeling like people are controlling us or people like feel people are taking an active role in sabotaging us. It's our responsibility how we respond to that. And why is responsibility so important? You might be asking, other than some of the things that Brian talked about before, blaming other people is the easy route, making other people responsible for our problems. But by making them responsible, we also take away our ability to exact change in our lives. Taking responsibility leaves us with no excuses, no scapegoats, and it forces us to use other tools taught in this book to make real change. If we're in a position that we don't want to be in, we have to know that it's up to us to change this. It's our responsibility. And of course, the question comes right after, why is responsibility so important? How can I take responsibility? Well, Brian says here, to say to yourself that I am responsible whenever something happens to you. I think this is great, but of course, it could easily be overlooked. When something bad happens, good. It's time to learn and move on. Of course, this is coming from Jocko Willink's field manual. Good. When something good happens, good. This is what I deserve. So by taking responsibility, not only do you take responsibility for the bad things that might be happening in your life or, or the negative outcomes or the things that you think aren't part of the plan, you need to take responsibility for those, but you also get to take responsibility for the things that go right. So that's really why responsibility is so important. Of course, you're not going to be able to change unless you hold responsibility. And also, you're not going to be really able to celebrate yourself unless you hold responsibility for the change that happens. Our first highlighted point here is before. German philosopher Goethe once wrote, everything is hard before it is easy. You may need to exert tremendous discipline to develop new habits of thought and behavior. But once you have them firmly locked in, they enable you to accomplish vastly more with less. Habits shape our lives. When actively created with outcome in mind, habits are the quickest way to make a change. The, they take willpower up front, and this is what stops most people from actually making change. But after that initial period, habit becomes easy and transforms us every day into who we want to become. A quick PS here that this book is part of the whole masterclass I'm doing on habits. You can check that out at the link down below, themindmapguy.com, if you want to learn a little bit more about habits. Next, we're going to move on to what habits do you need to build? Check in with your future self. What are you doing by habit that is currently either a struggle or just simply not getting done? I recommend you fill out these points here if you have the mind map downloaded. What habits do you need to let go of? A similar question to answer is to check in with your future self again. What are you doing right now that your future self wouldn't be proud of? Or put another way, what are you doing right now that won't get you to the future self that you want to be? That was our first highlighted point here before, I think one of the most important points of the book. Our next big idea is zero. To simplify your life, zero-based strategy thinking is one of the most powerful strategies that you can learn and apply on a regular basis. Here's how it works. Ask yourself, is there anything I'm doing right now, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't get into again if I were to start over today? If the answer is yes, then your next question is, how do I get out of this situation and how fast? So what's more important? That's really what this is all about. What's more important, quitting or getting started? So let's say you come across something that you know you probably shouldn't be doing. Maybe you started it with the best of intentions, but as time went on, you've realized that it's just not for you. Quitting is extremely important, and I don't think we talk about it enough. Getting started on something new is, of course, equally important. One of the characteristics I admire most in people is their ability to make a decision and take action quickly. These people generally are the type of people who can get things done, and I look at those people as my people. I'm part of that crew. Here's where getting started quickly can hurt you, though, and I've been dinged by this quite a few times before. When you're constantly getting started on new projects, goals, habits, or relationships, they can start to compile. Before you know it, you've got 15 projects on the go and none of them is getting your full attention. Getting started quickly is a great trait, don't get me wrong here, but we also need to be masters of letting go. 
Great question. Is there anything I'm doing right now, knowing what I know, I wouldn't commit or get into again? And then if the answer is yes, look into how you can let that project, goal, habit, or person go as quickly as possible. This stops the accumulation effect and allows you to make real progress towards your desires. A quick side note here as well is, when is the most painful time in anyone's life? The decision to stop something. So let's say you got into a business partnership, a relationship, a project, and it just isn't going the way that you were expecting it to go. After a month or two months or three months, you've grown quite tired of the project relationship or you know business partnership, but you just can't quite let it go. And that's why we need to be masters of letting it go. When we're able to let things go, we can move on with a newfound energy towards the next thing that we're going to accomplish. We don't have to kind of beat ourselves up with the relationship and when it's not going the way that we think it's going and stuff like that. And that's an extremely painful period of time. The quicker we can be able to let that go and move on to the next thing, the better. Our next big idea is clarity. In this respect, clarity is terribly important. Successful people have tremendous clarity about who they are, what they want, and how they're going to get it. Unsuccessful people usually are unsure and confused of who they are, what they want, and where they are going. One powerful exercise you can practice to supercharge your thinking and accelerate your results is called idealization. In idealization, you continually imagine the perfect outcome or solution for any situation. You project forward three to five years or even further, and then you create a mental picture of the kind of life and career that would be ideal for you in every respect. So how clear are you about who you are, what you want, and how you're going to get there? Brian Tracy says here that successful people know the answers to these questions, and unsuccessful people are usually unsure and confused about them. This is one of the most the one of the biggest differentiators between successful people and unsuccessful people. And I've even seen this at play in my own life as well. A clear ideal of their future selves, their work, and their accomplishments. Having clarity around each of these areas will lead you to make the right choices. But being foggy around them can leave you going in circles for years, decades, or even a lifetime. So how do we go about getting clarity? Well, visualization slash idealization. What you want to do here is visualize three to five years from now. Everything in your life has worked out perfectly. Everything that you started, everything that you, uh, everything that you wanted has come true. You want to make sure that each area of your life, areas like relationships, health, wealth, mental, career, and business, you want to know what the ideal future looks like in each one of those areas. And what I would suggest here is, let's write this down. After doing that visualization exercises, don't just sit there and, and let it kind of stew in your own mind. Write this down. Put it on these two nodes of the mind map or do whatever you would normally do when you're writing it down an exercise like that. A couple of different things from my own life just to share with you and give you some inspiration is that I have a continually deeping loving relationship with my girlfriend in three to five years. I am in the best shape of my life without struggling with food and exercise as I have in the past. I have enough savings in the bank to last me years given what my lifestyle is. I have a clear mind and I have control over my emotions. This YouTube channel and coaching business is my full-time endeavor, helping people better themselves every single day. Those are mine. I want to hear what yours are. Leave some down in the comments for me. I'm really interested to see what you guys see yourself as in three to five years. This ideal version of your future, whether it's three, whether it's five, whether it's 10, you can pick your own. I generally like to live my life in three year increments. I actually heard that from a pastor at one point in time. Now I'm not super religious as of right now, but I heard that from a pastor one time and that stuck out in my head. Our next big idea, our next highlighted point here is about management. Time management is really life management, personal management, management of yourself. This point is all about management, as you can see. People who value themselves highly allocate their time carefully. They give their time usage a lot of thought. When you love your life, you love every minute of it. 
you are carefully you are very careful about misusing or wasting any of the precious minutes and hours of each day. Now that we have this ideal future planned through our exercise on clarity, why wait? The future is created in this moment, not in the moment. It's created in this moment. Sure, there are a lot of things that we're going to need to get done in order for that future to become a reality, but what can we actually control? And I think this is where a lot of people make a misstep with goal setting and with habits and etc. What can we really control about the things that we want to achieve? The only thing that we can control is our next actions, our actions in this moment. For me, this was the biggest mindset shift that I've got since I started this YouTube channel. Previously, when I thought of an ideal future, all it did was actually make me anxious. I actually thought that goal setting was kind of a useless exercise because of this phenomenon right here. I thought goals were bad because setting them make me less likely to achieve them than if I actually didn't set them at all. This idea of just living up to my goals moment to moment to moment changed my life. Here's what I do now. Instead of setting goals and getting clarity around what I want and letting it kind of eat me up inside that I'm not there yet, here's what I do instead. I set those big goals. I visualize my ideal. Then I look at what habits, daily actions, or behaviors, mental or physical, I would need to make that a reality. Focus on those big rocks instead of focusing on all the small things that are going to push me in the direction of my big future long term, what I'm going to do is focus on what I can do in the moment. Don't pay so much attention to how far away my ideal is in the future. That's what I used to do is I would set these big goals and I would realize how far away I was and every day was just an exercise in not making very much progress towards this big giant goal because how much progress can you really make in a day? Instead now I don't pay so much attention to how far away my ideal is in the future. Certainly, I take time to measure my progress, especially in the endeavors that are more easily measurable, but progress almost isn't even the goal. Living up to my ideal moment to moment to moment, getting a little bit better every single minute. That's really what the idea is here. I try to bring mindfulness to that. I try and make sure that I'm clear around what I actually want. And then I just bring myself to the present moment. I bring my mindfulness to the present moment and I give it all the energy that I possibly can. Our final big idea here is all about questions. And I love that we're ending here because questions are a big part of my coaching practice. Here are several additional questions that you should ask and answer as a regular part of personal strategic planning. If you could wave a magic wand and have whatever you wished for in any part of your life, what would that be? If you could design your perfect lifestyle, what would it look like? How would you change your life if you received a million dollars in cash, tax-free today? What is the first thing that you would do? What parts of your work do you enjoy the most and do the best? Where do you excel? What sorts of activities make you the happiest? What would you do? How would you spend your, your, how would you spend your time if you learned that you only had six months left to live? What one great thing would you dare to dream if you knew you could not fail? If you were absolutely guaranteed success in any one goal, small or large, short term or long term, what would that goal be? So what questions are you asking of yourself? These are some really great questions that Brian Tracy has presented us here today. Each one of them deserves some thought and some meditation around that. But these questions, I think, are some of the best out there. Really, Brian has boiled down some of the best questions that I ask my coaching clients and added a few in, we could easily miss the opportunity just to examine the questions that we're asking ourselves every day. So these are great questions, but quite often we're asking questions that we wouldn't even dare speak out loud. Questions that happen in our head might be something like, why do I always fail? Or I'm so stupid. Or why does that person have more than me? Comparative. How could I possibly think that I could do that? I believe that the, our lives are run by the questions that we ask. Therefore, I think it's important that we examine the questions that we ask. Are you asking negative, focused questions like this? Or are you asking questions that have big picture focus, that have positive outcome focus? 
that have kind of that patented Brian Tracy spin to yourself? Are we asking constant negative focused questions? Let's replace those with some of the positive ones that Brian shared with us here today. I want to thank you for being with me here today all the way to the very end of the video. This was Focal Point by Brian Tracy. If you want to get a little bit more information, if you want to get a synthesis of all of my ideas from all the books that I've read, you can visit themindmapguy.com and check out my master classes. I have master classes on things like mind mapping, learning, habits, which this book is included in, and goal setting. Many more to come. Thanks for being with me here today, and I will see you in the next one.